So welcome, welcome to all of you. This is our last day of our virtual MAND refresher training. I'm, I'm glad that you can join us. I hope some more of your colleagues, our colleagues will join as we kick off. Um, let me start by sharing my screen. What are we gonna do today? We're gonna have as every day, a quick recap of our previous day. I should have written a recap of day three, of course, not day four. Um, and then uh, we haven't quite finished talking about phase three yesterday. So we'll finish that today. Um, and there are still one or two calculations that I would like to um, talk with you about in step two of phase three. And then we're going to talk about the last step of that phase. And we will spend the rest of the the morning uh, of session on phase four, talking about phase four. Good morning, Clifford. Good morning, sorry. No worries. <laughs> so um, what did we talk about yesterday? Um, well, we went through steps one and two of phase three. And um, just a few things to note on phase one, to, to recall for all of us, we said that this is quite a flexible process, the, the sort of... Um, um, going from phase one to phase two is, is quite flexible and um, it's uh, not so easy to, to draw a hard line between those two phases. But in essence, what step one is for is to slowly guide the potential entrepreneurs towards an entrepreneurial thinking and start um, visualizing the data that was collected in phase two to then um, transform them into action plans. And it's also a moment where the facilitators can work with the, the, the entrepreneurs in verifying some of the information that they have collected. Um, and then um, we talked about uh, coming now to, to, uh, to the second step, we talked about why we need an, an enterprise development plan and how that should be um, what that should look like and, and how it should be um, put together. So we said that the EDP describes the enterprise and the different strategies the entrepreneurs will take covering all the five areas of enterprise development. We also said that it's really important that the EDP is adapted to the capacities of the entrepreneurs because it should indeed be them who are the main actors in designing their uh, enterprise development plan, of course, with support by the facilitator. Um, and it should be comprehensive, so that it should really all cover all of the five areas of enterprise development. And then we talked about the different strategies, and uh, I don't know whether you remember the, the slide with the different bubbles of the seven different strategies that um, are covered by the EDP. Um, and then we said that the first really important decision that the entrepreneurs will have to make is to decide uh, which position in the market chain they want to occupy. Um, and they need to really be clear about the exact business activity um, that they're going to, to engage in. And this is really important because um, the the information from that will flow into the financial calculations that they will then start to start to do and the first one is a decision around the the size of the business and the market share that they will hence occupy and the size of the business is of course important um, to understand whether it will um it will help them to achieve the financial objectives they have set for themselves, remember, in the, in the first phase of, of MAND, um, and how much they want to be able to gain from this business for their, for their livelihoods. Um, and then uh, the entrepreneurs list all the fixed assets that they will need to run their business. And this is an important step also for the facilitator to understand whether the entrepreneurs have really understood what it is that they they will do as an enterprise because all of the all of the assets need to be listed here from very big to very small and it gives the entrepreneurs but of course the facilitators also an idea of um, whether they have really thought of everything all all that will be necessary to to engage in that particular activity they have chosen for themselves um, and then the entrepreneurs calculate the fixed costs and we said that. 
um, fixed costs are those costs that are independent of the level of production. So independent of how much of the product um, the enterprise produces. Um, and into those fixed costs will go um, the calculation of the depreciation um, of their equipment and maintenance costs. And we said that that is money that will have to be set aside every month to be able to afford replacement or um, repair of that equipment um, as time goes by. Uh, and then we talked about the variable, variable costs and the difference to the fixed costs, of course, is that these are dependent on the production level. Um, so they will, they will change depending on how much the, the enterprise produces of, of the product. So things like packaging, transport, um, any um, seasonal labor that will need to be engaged. Um, and then the entrepreneurs calculate their yearly income which we said is not yet the profit. Um, and then they calculate the profit. And importantly, this is the point where the entrepreneurs together with the facilitators realize whether the profit they calculate based on these calculations previously is going to match their expectations. So here, as usual, I've put together um, <clears throat> um, a slide of the pitfalls or, or the sort of questions we discussed yesterday um, or potential issues you might have faced. And um, we said it was really important. So there was a question around who should design the enterprise development plan because there was this, um, this comment that it's quite complex and, and the problems that many of you and your facilitators face are is that um, the capacities at the local level are, are low. Um, and so we reiterated that it is really important for the sustainability of the enterprise, for the entrepreneur to be the one who designs the enterprise development plan. So they really need to understand what is in it and why. Um, and of course, they need to have support um, from the facilitators and perhaps also from some external personnel, but those should be ideally perhaps in the family, people who will be around as the situation around the enterprise changes and entrepreneurs will need to adapt their, their strategies to the changing situation. Um, and in this context, we also said that the template for the EDP that is contained in the film, uh, field facilitator guidelines should really be used as a toolkit. So it should be adapted to the local needs and capacities. Um, you don't have to use it as it is in the guidelines. And we had some really good advice from Oscar that it's good to, to use some really practical examples as you, as you do your calculations that are perhaps a little bit more difficult to grasp for, for local producers. And I just wanted to reiter reiterate also um, that in the estimation of, um, of the, uh, the profit that the enterprise can expect to make per unit of the product, and I. I don't know whether you remember, but I told you yesterday that you should calculate either um, um, one half or one third of the selling price for this, dependent on whether the enterprise is going to be mostly engaging in, in trading and producing or whether um, the enterprise will be about some kind of value adding and transformation. I just wanted to reiterate that this is really just an estimate to get a rough idea. It's not an exact calculation and it should not be um, it should not be um, regarded as that or used as that. Um, and then we briefly touched upon, but we ran out of time to talk about the cash flow projection. And um, we were saying that this is really a process that takes time to, or a calculation that takes time to understand, but it is really crucial. And we're going to talk about that this morning. Okay, now I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I would like to have a brief discussion with you um, to see whether there are any points um, that were still unclear in what we talked about yesterday or whether there were perhaps any um, um, light bulbs that went up, um, lit up yesterday after a training where you said, oh, this was a really interesting point. I really would like to to talk about this again um, 
any questions or comments from you at this point on yesterday's session? No, I just had a, a small uh, observation, but maybe that's at the end of the EDP because what we have seen, uh, we can have a discussion afterwards maybe, uh, that the EDP that we use in the MEMD uh, training is often not the, the format of business uh, of a plan that you can go with to the, to the bank for finance. You know, we, we uh, the EDP has a lot of information and it's a, it's a planning document that has also financial calculations. But I think people have to realize that when you need, you want to go to uh, a business plan is, is, is by the financial institutions often uh, still another document that you have to transfer this to. So I just wanted to say, I think you have all the ingredients in the EDP most of the ingredients, but not uh, but maybe not always all. And this has been sometimes uh, uh, an issue that we have seen whenever the entrepreneurs want to then go to a financial institution for the loan, then there has to be still some additional calculations done or some additional uh, work done. I just wanted to flag that and maybe also later Discussion or maybe the experience of Isabel and Jacques on this, also to hear about that. But maybe first to finish the whole EDPE work. Yeah, thank you, Sophia. I, I I will. I was going to mention that that um, once once if the entrepreneurs determine that they will need uh, external financial support, um, there will have to be a step where. Um, together with the facilitators, they review whether the EDP uh, matches the criteria of the of the provider of the fund. Yes, um, I can see the hand up of Akbe Agbobli. Welcome. Hello. Good morning. I think my question is related to that of Sophie. It refers to the drafting of the EDP. There are certain institutions that require other criteria, uh, such as our, um, profitability of the uh, enterprise or the business, and also uh, funds recovery or um, yeah, recovery of the funds that have been invested. So these are other parameters that should be taken into account. The last presenter talked about, uh, the last intervention, I mean, talked about uh, the fact that we could also uh, resort to looking for an expert to help in this. Yeah, thank you. So that's what I wanted to add. Thank you very much. Yes, very good point. Please, Oscar, I can see your hand up. Welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, my experience is that um, the, the entrepreneurs normally will forget uh, costs for maintenance and repairs. Uh, they keep forgetting them and, uh, and also the cost of replacing all items. So in the process of implementing uh, an activity, then you find that the activity can easily come to a halt if they forget that. So we keep on reminding them that you must always budget for this and make it within your plan that periodically you have to examine your machines yeah, and, and, and make sure that they are repaired. And if they are old items, you have to replace them. Otherwise, it is very easy for the whole uh, activity to come to a halt if you don't take care of that. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you for reminding us of that. Yes, very, very good point. Please, Johnny. Thank you. I, I want to comment on this issue of this um, financial institution. Uh, they are really key because um, yeah, they are other sources of funding. So in the reality, all the money is in the mark and the market. If we manage that the producer organizations will sell the products in the market, this is really very good. Even if trying to avoid going to financial institutions, unfortunately, most of our producer organizations need funding 
for loans and so on from produce uh, from financing sector and they have their own forms and, and formats to fill in if the producer organizations go at the end of the process and uh, will take a lot of time to translate what they have done in this enterprise development plan to the format that the bank have. I really encourage the countries try to um, motivate financial institutions to discuss together and to try to develop a, a format that the bank will accept. Um, for example, motivating to participate in these trainings and trying to under that they understand what we are doing. A very good example that we have is in Bolivia, where the colleagues from Rural Invest, Rural Invest here is how they have a, a software dealing with that. So everything, also you put the input, the, the, the information and, and it's a reporter, but they do this training to the uh, banks and so And what we have managed in Bolivia with MAD and this rural invest, now the development bank of Bolivia is using this rural invest. And also they are somehow applying this MAD. Yesterday I had a, a, a conversation with the colleagues of Madagascar. I, I appreciate that the, the, the network of women is here. Rural Invest wants to work on Madagascar in Madagascar. But my position was to say, say yes, we will support this if that is also with the MAD and working together with the producer organization, not separate parallel things because at the end, this bankable business plan, or they want to see, is a um, translation. So, on uh, or um, something that you put on the table and and allow you to take to talk with the guy who has the money. So, hope that we could work together on building this. Over. Thank you, Johnny. That's a really, really good point, and I I want to make two comments on that quickly before I give the floor to Wahangi. Um, the first one is that, um, indeed, the engagement with potential financial service providers very early on in the process is foreseen in the MAND process. And I'm, I guess you could also see the process not just as a tool to develop the entrepreneurial skills of the entrepreneurs, but it's also about a process of engaging um, strategic partners along the, along the way. It's, it looks like uh, Isabel would like to come in. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to finish that. Um, and of course, as, as Sophie was also saying, the MAND toolkit contains a template for the, for the enterprise development plan. But that's not to say that this is what they need to use. Um, so if you, if you can already foresee that there is a possibility to get funds from an external final, uh, funding partner, and they will, they have, uh, concrete requirements and criteria, then of course you should work towards that. I think what is important to highlight is that the EDP really covers um, the areas that the entrepreneurs need to understand about the strategy of the business so that they should keep in mind even if they use the criteria by the, by the banks. And on the rule invest um, software, I, I also agree that it's a really interesting software to use. And but I do think that there is a step before that. And as you said, Johnny, um, the it is a translation of of the of the the enterprise development plan into into a calculating software. But in order to use this, the entrepreneurs really need to understand why are we doing these calculations? What are they for? And this is what MAND is perfect for. Um, so just I don't know whether Isabel would like to add to that. No, not really. I think it's, you, you covered exactly what I had in mind. Uh, and one thing also as experience, what I saw that uh, the, the uh, financial institution be, be, being a rural banking, etc., cetera, et cetera, um, they have themselves, their, uh, let's say, their facilitators. Uh, and when they can participate in 
meetings or part of the training in, in, in phase two, for example, then they can, they can provide the format, but also they will uh, help the people uh, to, to, to do the calculation. That means the local people won't have to do themselves the break even points or, or some of the more complicated uh, uh, calculation. Uh, the bank facilitator will do it together with them and show them the use of it. So, so that they can relax a little bit on, on not feeling all the necessary uh, uh, forms yeah, and formats. Thank you, Isabel, for this additional information. I would like to give the floor to Wahangi. You're welcome, please. Thank you for the flow. I would like to add something. Through experience in Madagascar, the institutions or the financial uh, system adopted uh, is adapted to the, I mean, it depends on the um, amount of the project. So it should not forget that we have financial interests uh, requested by the uh, financial partners. So here in Madagascar, we identified three types of uh, uh, community credit systems where the microfinancial institutions, uh, depending on the volume of the uh, business. And then we also have the traditional banks and then we tried to develop uh, our first systems that is to put in place a savings and credit uh, system or go straight to the microfinance institutions with which we uh, have negotiated. This is a service that we offer to our members. So we negotiate uh, favorable conditions or preferential conditions for our members. So these are uh, securities, uh, the interest rates, because currently in Madagascar, the interest rates are very high. And with our small uh, businesses that we want to create, it becomes a little bit difficult or very difficult actually to access uh, the formal funding uh, uh, given by the microfinance institutions. I'm not talking about the big banks for the time being. This is completely out of question. We cannot access. Uh, so for us, we are working with the two systems. Uh, so we help the our organization, the producer organizations to come up with a clear system that they can manage themselves uh, or we uh, guide other members to the uh, microfinancial uh, microfinance institutions that uh, uh, with which we have organized um, and negotiated some favorable conditions uh, in advance so that they can uh, you know uh, make it slightly easier to, for the uh, organizations to access uh, funds. Yeah, that's Wonderful. What I to Thank share. you so much, Wahangi, uh, to, to give us your example of the type of service that you provide to your members. And I think that's that's really useful also perhaps for other um, FFPOs to hear that this is indeed a very important role that you can take on um, a, a service provision to your, um, Sorry, I can hear the translation in... in the French translation in the English channel for some reason. I'm just going to switch it off. Um, yes, so thank you so much for this, Mahangi. I could see, I think José was first, please. Greetings, uh, all. Uh, just uh, to add uh, on what uh, Madame Juan has said on uh, the issue of a financial system in Madagascar. For farmers, it's uh, very difficult for, for farmers in Madagascar to have access uh, to credit, particularly for the young farmers and the women as well. That's why we came up uh, 
with uh, a system so that uh, we can ease uh, uh, access to credit. There is a JVEC group, uh, uh, but uh, from those, be, beside those one, uh, we also give uh, training to farmers on uh, financial uh, 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 management. So we help youth uh, to understand how to manage their activities. And uh, also we train them uh, how to have uh, a, a mind of an entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur. Thank you very much, Jose, for, for adding also the point that, of course, um, there is the opportunity or the, the option of starting small and perhaps starting with your own savings and credit group. And um, we're sort of slightly moving into agenda items that I, I was going to talk about later. But yes, thank you very much for, for, this, um, for this edition. Um, uh, please, Oscar. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kata. Uh, in Kenya, we have used both the Rural Invest and the uh, MAD. Uh, actually, within KFS, we have got some projects using Rural Invest, uh, one project using Rural Invest, and uh, the rest of them use MAD. Uh, but Rural Invest is normally for small projects, I think between $10,000 and, uh, and $50,000, US dollars. Above $50,000, then you need a bigger, uh, you, you need, you need, you need a, a methodology that is going to, to be very clear in the way you, you, you do the calculations. But for rural invest, I find it for good for very small uh, projects with, with farmers. Uh, uh, but um, the MAD is quite versatile. You can do this for, uh, like we, we have got one group that has, has gotten uh, funding from a financial institution based, based on uh, the enterprise development plan that we, we developed with them. Uh, so uh, really um, also uh, the problem with rural invest is that it's so much dependent on the staff. You don't have the staff, you can't do it. Yeah, that, that is why I don't like it. Yeah, you don't have the staff, you can't do it. The facilitators have to be well-trained and, and then you spend a lot of time training the facilitators. Uh, but for the, for the MAD, uh, from my experience is that you can train the local people to be able to do some of this work, do the, the data collection, the market surveys, uh, and, and that becomes quicker. So that, that is my experience with the two methodologies. Yeah, thank you. That's really interesting. Thank you, Oscar. Um, it's, it's great to, to hear of someone who has used both and has experience with it both, um, with both of it. Wonderful. Um, any other? Yes, please, Jack. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to add in that first we have to do all the calculation for the MEMD. Then it helps the leader to be able to discuss with the bank or at least to know how much money they need. And then they have enough power then to bargain with the bank. When you go to buy a house, okay, if you go to the bank and say to the bank, I want to buy a house, the house will say, I don't know, I don't understand what you want to say. If you go to the bank and say, okay, I have this much money, the cost of the house is this much, I want this money, and these are my guarantee, okay, then you can discuss with the bank. And MAD is some type of tool that helps the villager to collect all the information and to discuss with the people who or to find money and to discuss with the people who are going to give or to lend money. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Jacques. It's always, uh, you always have a, have a, have a way of putting things in um, in very clear words. <laughs> Thank you. Um, anyone else who would like to have um, uh, who, who has a question on yesterday still before we move to the cash flow projection? Okay. So let me start sharing my screen again. Right. 
So actually, before we move to the cash flow projection, so just a reminder, we're still in phase three and we're still in step, step two of phase three, uh, where the EDPs are being prepared. Um, I'm not going to talk about the break-even point because we don't really have time for this, but it's it's also something that the, the banks will usually calculate for the entrepreneur. So this is not necessarily a calculation that they need to they need to know about um, or understand fully or be able to do it um, on their own. Um, so I'm, if we have time at the end and you, are, you want to ask a question on that, we can talk about it. But I just wanted to talk now about um, forecasting profits and losses. So that means adding up the different sources of income and analyzing how they're spent. And this calculation should be projected for the first and second seasons or years of the production. And it's, it's a useful budgeting tool that also allows the, the entrepreneur to review the records of the, enter, of the enterprise at the end of the period um, and compare their projections with the actual income and, and spending figures. So the profit figure is obtained by calculating the difference between the total expenses, the total costs, and the total revenues or incomes over a, a specified period of time. So the total expenses are um, fixed costs, depreciation costs, and variable costs for a production target. And the total revenues include, of course, income from sales. So let's move then to the cash flow projection. And I was wondering whether anyone could tell me what this is good for. What, what do we use? Yes, please, Isabel. Yeah, just one point uh, on, on the previous uh, table. Yes. Um, uh, this this uh, projection on on uh, profit and loss is also used to to as a, as a planning tool. That means, what about uh, if there is no profit? They do all this calculation, and the, and the, the profit is is not there. So they will use this result to actually review the, 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 their strategy and their plan. Maybe they have to reduce their uh, uh, cost and they will go back to uh, re revisit their planning at that time and, and see how they could save some cost, uh, at least for the two first years. Uh, and and uh, so as such, it is also a planning tool, not just a projection for a projection. And all the all the uh, tables are like this actually, especially this one and the cash flow. That means they will play with the elements to go back to their plan and make it actually profitable and make it uh, also uh, easy easy for for the management of the cash and for the cash flow. Okay, thank you. Thank you for this important addition. Yes, um, so. Then going back to the cash flow projection, could yes, please, Oscar, are you going to talk about that? Uh, yes, I, I just want yes. to say something on uh, uh, the focusing of profits and losses. Mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes I've, I've noticed that uh, the entrepreneurs will always think that uh, if you start investing in an enterprise today, you will make money today. So that should be made very clear to them that uh, you cannot start making money from from year one, you may go year one, year two, and you start making some money in year three, year four, year five. But sometimes they have some very high expectations that immediately we start doing this activity, we are going to make money, and it's not true. Uh, and that's why we calculate this for two years so that they are able to see the difference, yeah, year one and two. Sometimes I, I go even to year three, yeah, just to show them that uh, uh, really you may start making money from year three. And there are a few things you need to look at your costs. Are you, which costs can, can I reduce so that I can increase my, my profit margin? Uh, what production systems do I need to look at uh, so that I become more efficient in my production system? All that, those things have to come in. And they have to learn this experience in year one, year two, sometimes year three. So from year four, they'll start making their money. Uh, year three or four, they'll start making good money. Uh, but they should not expect money immediately. Yeah, you have to lower the expectations. When you are discussing this with them, you have to lower the expectations there. Yeah. Yes, and indeed these calculations will help them to also visualize this. Um, yes. 
Yes. Yes, please. Thank you, Oscar. Please, Mahangi. Thank you. And it, uh, I want to uh, say all depend on the turnover because uh, when it comes to cash flow or uh, to cash flow, you have to understand it more detail that uh, the uh, previous uh, table. It means that uh, the cash flow is done uh, maybe uh, monthly and uh, everything depend uh, on if you have a, a short term or long term uh, activities which can be uh, done in uh, many years so this will help you to understand how much uh, do you need as cash flow so that uh, you can start your activities I think that uh, this is the most important yes, point. Yes, I think here. you're completely right. Thank you in, very much, Wahandi. Indeed. Uh, table of um, cash flow. So uh, the the cash flow projection informs about what funds are needed, um, and uh, and when to set up and run the enterprise until it starts to become profitable. And up until now, all the calculations were done for an enterprise running at full capacity. But as we have also heard from Oscar and, and, and others, the enterprise usually does not run at full capacity from the beginning and it's, it takes time to start up operations and to start up the business. But during this time, there will be expenses and uh, uh, supposedly very little or maybe even no income at all. Um, so the cash flow projection um, is a calculation that will help to identify what are the funds needed to, to set up and run the enterprise until it's profitable. And it will also indicate when these funds are needed and how much and when profit can, do, can be distributed. So it's, again, as Wahangi said, a bit more detailed than the um, profit and loss calculation that we've talked about before in that it really shows by month um, how much money the entrepreneurs will have in hand by the, by the end of it, or how many how much cash need they will have, have at the end of each month, for each month. Uh, so it will also help to estimate the needs for a loan and calculate the loan amount if that is necessary. Um, so to do this calculation, the entrepreneurs will first have to imagine how much they will produce and sell for the first year or the first month in Bohangi, um, talked about this, that it's really about also imagining the, your production level and how much you will be able to, to sell um, in the first year of first months, first month and the second and the third until the company reaches full capacity. So the facilitator needs to really also provide guidance on the production volumes so that they're no, not over or underestimated. Um, I would like to show you a template, a very simple template um, for this calculation. And um, uh, I'm going to talk through it, but if you have any questions afterwards, please, we have some time to talk about this because we've also seen that in some of the EDPs that we have received, this was the, the calculation of the table with most of the gaps. So um, it's really important that we, that we all understand how to do this. Um, so apologies, this is not in French, but um, in, the, in the columns, you will see a description of the items and then um, the first six months, um, one, one column per month. And you will have here the costs for small equipment, building machineries. Um, then you have the fixed costs per month, the variable cost per month, a total of the costs, which is A. And then you have underneath the sales per month, which is B. And at the bottom, you have your cash needs, or if you have a surplus, you have cash in hand. So that's um, uh, the sales per month um, uh, sub subtracted from the total costs of the month. Um, so the way the entrepreneur should go about populating this table is um, using the numbers they have calculated in the previous calculations. And they will start by inputting all the list of all their equipment costs and variable costs in, in detail. Um, and then they could add if they have any 
cash, and this is not listed here in this in this table, but they could add to the to the income of the sales per month if they have any any cash that they may have had from the beginning to invest in in uh, in their enterprise. Um, and then, as I said, they subtract the costs from the income and sales or cash in hand, and we'll see where they are, whether they are in plus or minus um, at the end of the month uh, after these calculations. So a positive balance um, shows the maximum money that the entrepreneur can then keep in the pocket for the next month. A minus means that they do not have enough cash indeed in that month to run their business. Uh, to pay for their costs. So they, they will need to either adjust some of their costs uh, or the, the, uh, the production volume, uh, or they will um, need to borrow or get some external funds. Um, so any resulting cash amount at the bottom of this table is then reported um, in the next month as cash in hand, uh, which will be added to to the, to, the, to the money they have on top of any sales they may have made. So what kind of adjustments could they make? Um, the fixed costs don't really allow a, a lot of room for play. So those are usually fixed, but um, the variable costs um, can be of course played with. So you can adjust your production volumes um, and equipment costs can also be adjusted. So instead of buying machinery, for example, or uh, building new 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 buildings, you could you could rent um, for the first year or so. Please, I can see Rohangi's hand up. Yes. Uh, after you finish, I would like to talk. I would like to take the floor. Thank you very much. I would like uh, to add something. You know, the fixed cost, if you invest, uh, this is uh, the total cost of investment that uh, we'll have uh, to put on uh, the cash flow because uh, you cannot buy a machine that uh, you are going to pay uh, monthly. If you have to buy uh, a machine, you'll have uh, to pay the whole amount. Also, I'd like uh, to add uh, that uh, at the end, uh, we need a line where we uh, are going to calculate uh, all the cash flow, monthly cash flow, because uh, this will help uh, the uh, total cost uh, of uh, uh, cash flow so that uh, you can start your uh, enterprise. So I'm thinking the, uh, we need to add uh, one more line where we are going to calculate uh, everything that we have uh, in, as cash in hand or monthly. That is, that is, the, that is A minus B. Oui, mais après, il faudrait calculer A moins yes, B but, uh, plus C moins that, D plus E moins e B F plus C et etc. Okay. Pour avoir le montant uh, négatif uh, de, uh, dire, uh, maximal yes. <laughs> pour okay. pouvoir aller négocier un uh, crédit. Voilà. Yes. So that's how it will help yes, thank you very much for this addition. As I said, this is a very simplified table. I have another example here. Uh, let me go to the next slide. So here, this is, sorry, again, this is only in English, um, and I don't know whether it's visible at all, because uh, it's quite small. But you can see again the six months. And what I wanted to say is that this table is, of course, the result of the process. So you have to imagine this table empty and um, for the entrepreneurs to start populating it in the order that I've, I've just described. So um, here they have in already included, let me find my pointer. Here they've already included a startup capital, including a loan, which of course they will need to 
um, calculate still um, through this table. So um, you start without this, you start with whatever you have in cash in hand, but here they don't have any cash in hand in the first month. Um, and imagine that this is empty. So you will fill this up later, and then you will add all of your equipment, fixed costs, variable costs, any interest that you might have to, sorry, the interest will comes later. This is on the, that's on the loan. Um, so this is, again, imagine this empty. So you add up all your total expenses. And, um, and then all of this is, so this is deposit into resource management fund, deposit into social development fund, so here for the first month, they say they will not make any of these deposits yet, but they will in month six, they will pay towards those funds. Um, so they calculate the total expenses um, and the total cash that they have. In this case, they didn't have any in the beginning and they will come up with, with minus. So then they calculate okay so this is how much we would like to then take as a loan and based on the loan that they will have here at the top they will now have some cash in hand for that month after they have deducted all their expenses and this cash in hand they will then add at the top of the table for the second month and here they still don't have any sales so the total cash they have for that month is still the same that they had at the end of the first month and then they will add all of the costs as as they've done before and they will arrive at a final amount of cash in hand at the end of the second month which they will then insert again at the top of the table for at the beginning of first of the third month as the cash in hand and so on and so at the bottom of the table they can see um how much money at the end of each month they will be able to have in hand. Is there anything that I have forgotten to mention here or said incorrectly, Isabel and Jacques? I can see Oscar's hand up, please. Yes. Um, I think, Kata, that is, that is quite clear. Uh, in Kenya, what we did with this, sometimes we we gave an outlook for one year, for 12 months. Yeah. Especially what remains in the files of the of, of, of the entrepreneurs. We give an outlook for we gave an outlook for 12 months. Uh, and, and that made them understand um, more clearly that throughout the year, what the, what variable costs were they expecting to, to invest and all that. But when you are doing the business plan, we limited ourselves to six months, yeah, so that the table doesn't look so big and so messy. So, uh, but sometimes we, we took them over a longer period of time, up to 12 months, so that they can really have a big, a bigger picture of what happens in, in, in the business with all these costs. Uh, and, and that's exactly how you go about calculating them. You, you, you just do one column at a, at a time, and then you enter the cash at hand and you move on like that until you finish, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Oscar. And yes, I, um, the table should really be done at least until the cash needs at the bottom is equal zero um, for, or for the whole processing period. Please, Isabel. Yes. Yeah. And, and it also depends on the type of product you have, because sometimes you have seasonal products. And uh, uh, I mean, so, so, so you cover only the season and it could be one or two season in year one, one or two season in year two, but the season maybe three or four months only, uh, because of the because of the type of product you you are producing. So the, the the length of the what you want to cover in the cash flow projection, yes, is depending on about the product, and also if you want to have an overview, a longer overview, as as Oscar mentioned. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Isabel. Jacques, did you want to add anything? Yes, maybe. Please. Uh, I, for me, okay, the, the, when I work with the villagers, what, what is the problem I try to show to them is that they have to be clear when they start their business, what they will do in the first month, 
and to be sure they have to money, enough money to start this first month. Whatever the way you put your calculation is not a big problem. If you put startup capital at the top or down or whatever, that's not a problem. What they have to understand is that it should be clear. If they don't have the money to, first, to do the first month, they have to close. Then maybe they can try to find money elsewhere so they can find, and that's the way that now when start the problem of looking the money outside, it means the money they don't have. And then the discussion start among the villagers or with banks or whatever. Okay, that is the first thing I wanted to add. And one thing that is important also that uh, we don't find very often in other uh, calculation like this is that there is a de deposit to management fund and there is deposit to social fund. And these two things are very important in MEND because that's where you start to include environment protection and all what is related with environment. And that way also you include what is related with social development. That's what I wanted to add. I hope it is clear. Thank you, Jeff. Um, does anyone have a question on this? This is your chance, last day of our training. Yes, please, Oscar. Uh, um, also, sometimes to just uh, help in clarifying, especially on the sales, you know, you, you, you may ask the entrepreneurs, what about if we double the sales here? Yeah? Or we increased by some percentage these sales. Uh, then you, you, you must also inform them that as you, as you increase this, the, the, the quantities produced, then these costs will go up, like the variable costs and all that. You, you, you just do that. You can play with those figures just to show them that this, this variable cost will change depending yes. on the level of production, on the, on, the, on the level of sales and all that. Yes. So we can play with these figures just to create clarity in the mind of the entrepreneur that as you increase the sales, that means you have done more production, then yes. there's going to be an increase in the, the variable costs. And that will have an implication on, on, on your cash at hand at the end of the, of the month, yeah. Yes, correct. Thank you. Um, are there any questions from anyone? Yes, please, Jack. We cannot hear you, you're muted. You are muted. No, you're muted. Now it makes work. Yes. Okay. So you can work on the fixed cost also. Try to reduce the fixed cost by, for example, your uh, amortization. You don't need to put every month. You can put at the end of the year or at the end of the second year in case. Okay. Then also you can, in your fixed cost, you can say, okay, the first month, the manager will not be paid and he agreed to be paid on the second month, two months. So all this, you can play with all the costs as you want, okay? And variable costs also, you can adjust in different ways. For example, payment of raw material, you can have a discussion with the raw material producer and say, okay, we cannot pay you the first month or even the second month, but we pay you all after three months, you see? So all these things have to be really discussed in details and put on black and white, together with the villagers and also the raw material producer, the service provider, and make a real, real plan detailed so that everyone will know where they go. Thank you, Jacques. No questions? No more questions, comments? Okay, good. Uh, so, yes, so all in all, I just wanted to uh, summarize that the cash flow projection helps the entrepreneurs think about really the details and understand the importance of working capital to um, for the survival of the of the enterprise. Okay, um, so with all these calculations done, um, the 
the entrepreneurs can now prepare their financial plan. So they can, as we've already said, they can they can calculate their startup costs and capital needs for uh, operating expenses for at least the first three or four months, as Jacques has said. Um, and um, so they can estimate the amount of funding needed to set up the enterprise um, based on the sales projection, uh, the amount of funding that should be set aside to cover initial operating expenses, and uh, the amount of capital already available and the amount that remains to be found. And um, based on this, they can calculate their loan needs. I'm sorry, again, this is not translated into French. Um, so this is again, year or month in the columns. Um, and this is the cash need balance for the month that is reported here and where they, the entrepreneurs can then put in their own funds or perhaps funds from partners. Um, this is the total of that. And then they will see the remaining funds that need to be found and where they could be found either through friends, through a project, through a bank. And um, so if they, uh, if they decide to go for a loan through the bank and that is a possibility and then the bank will of course determine the repayment schedule and the interest the entrepreneurs will have to pay monthly on this loan. There is a tool included in the field facilitator toolkit on how to calculate interest rates, but um, it's, it, this is usually done by the, by the banks anyway. Okay, um, if there are no questions at this point on any of this, I would then move to the third step of um, the third phase, which is, um, it says here, uh, the entrepreneurs identify training and assistance needs, but importantly, um, this is based on the evaluation of their enterprise development plans. And um, in, so they've prepared their enterprise development plans and now they need to evaluate and eventually adjust, uh, adjust their plans. So this is um, also the moment where the entrepreneurs then they identify any support needs that they might have or training needs. And um, I just wanted to stop sharing for a second and ask you, because we're really interested to hear um, how has the evaluation of the enterprise development plan happened within your own context? Um, how did, who did that? Who was that done? Um, were there any tricky parts in that process? How did those discussions go? I would like to hear from you, please. Someone perhaps who has not yet spoken this morning. Sorry about the background noise. There is some construction going on. We're quite a good number today. Would someone perhaps like to, re to reflect on this? If you remember, how did you go about once the entrepreneurs have drafted their enterprise development plan? What happened next? Excuse me, Kata, there are a small interruption here, so I can't hear exactly what you say, but I guess you want, uh, we share about the RIN contact when we work with MA, MAPO to making a EDP, right? Yes, I'm sorry, I did not understand exactly what you were saying either, but what I wanted to ask is how, how was the EDP then evaluated? Was it evaluated? And how did you do that? Please turn. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, to uh, answer about your uh, Kata's question, I, I think um, to evaluate ev uh, to um, evaluate EDP first of all, 
uh, we work with uh, FFPO to make sure that the EDP completes with on a on a table and follow the process of MND training. And uh, second is the uh, we have to consider seven plan in EDP uh, to make sure to make sure on a aspect in EDP follow five criteria area to to be considered uh, carefully and also uh, make sure the farmer have uh, the risk plans uh, risk uh, plan uh, risk control uh, solution for all their risks yes um and and the and one one thing i one thing i th i think is very important is uh, uh we had to check edp uh, you know, to to create a profit after the first season from uh, um, make a uh, uh, startup startup yeah yeah, I think. And how did you do this? How do you usually do this evaluation? Um, who who does it? And and ah, uh, when we work with EDP, with FFPO, we have to um to to uh, show the EDP uh, that FFPO have done before, and uh, we uh, we follow each each table and ask farmer. So they will answer for facilitating to understand more clear about their context and also more understand about the um, what what they consider or what they make sure. And uh, farmer will explain very clear. Yes, I think we will check together. Oh, no. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you very much for for volunteering. To, to tell us how how you do it in the in the Vietnam context. Is there anyone else perhaps who is brave enough to unmute themselves and talk to us this morning about uh, how they've evaluated their enterprise the enterprise development plans? I can see Oscar's hand up. I was hoping perhaps someone, some someone else also could. <laughs> please, Oscar, please. Let, let them. I'll give my experience last. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm not sure we're going to have any more volunteers this morning. Okay, please, Oscar. Yes, Jack. Yes. Okay. okay. Oh, sorry. Jack, did you want to say something? Okay. I, I just wanted to say that there is a real problem of evaluation of EDP because as a trainer, we get some EDP sometimes from you. And when we go through this, the document does not mean that nothing is understand. That means there are a lot, lot, lot of problems. So I think before sending the EDP to Qatar or to anyone or to present, there should be a really, really strict evaluation. Thank you, Jacques. Yes, I support that. Please, Oscar. Yes, um, normally, after we have done the first rough drafts, we will again call for a meeting of the entire FFPO group. Uh, so you have to do a meeting and you subject this to them. Uh, looking at the, the five areas of enterprise development, I ask them whether the, first of all, what we ask, what, what we do is that we ask the, the data collectors, uh, what went wrong, what went well during the exercise, what were the experiences and lessons learned? Then after that, you find that you're broken the ice and you start discussing now the enterprise plan with a view of looking at it and you want to determine where there are gaps, yeah? 
So you subject the entire plant to them. It can be a one, half a day, uh, half a day activity. Um, but you are going to get them on, on all the areas of enterprise development. How do they understand the enterprise, uh, the business and all that? Uh, then you try to look at specific areas where you think there are gaps. Um, let them also identify those gaps and inform you, I think we have a gap here. We may need to fill this gap and all that. That's what we do basically. And in, in just a half day meeting, you, 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 you've finished all that. You go through the plan systematically, one item by another. And at the end of it, uh, you'll find that if there are gaps, then you may ask again the numerators to go back yeah, to, to fill in those gaps. Then we, we, after filling in the gaps later, then you, again, we'll be subjected to them. We, it's a two-way, it's a two-step process. The first one, you identify the gaps with the group. Then the, the, the data collectors will go back and get the information that is missing. And then when you fill it in again, you take it back and ask them, do you think it is now more comprehensive than it was before? I think that is the simple process that, you, that we go through in Kenya. Great, thank you, Oscar. Yes, thank you for this, uh, for, for letting us um, have an insight into the process in, in Kenya. Please, uh, Isabel. Yes, and um, what, what uh, Oscar described is, is the way to go, I think, but it implies, and that's what I think is, is, a, is, a, is a key point to address. It implies that the facilitator who will facilitate this uh, EDP assessment, participatory assessment with the local people, uh, will really master the, 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 the topic. That means we'll know perfectly what should be there, what could be the potential gaps in advance. It's, it's not a so easy exercise, actually, because you should have the, the, this person who will, who will uh, guide it or will facilitate it, should have an overview of the whole process, which is condensed in the EDP. So, um, uh, and that's, I think that's where maybe we, we see EDP, which are not very, very uh, well done. It's because it lacks maybe uh, uh, well-informed facilitation by the facilitator. Uh, and, and there are also contexts which are actually where the people are under pressure because, uh, for example, you encourage many, many, uh, uh, people to, to start their enterprise. But you say, for example, but we will give seed money to start enterprise to this much. That means, for example, 20, we have money for, for seed money to start the enterprise for only 20. So we will take the 20 best EDPs. And this is very actually scary for the local people because, uh, and what about those who won't have the perfect EDP? And in this, you can see very uh, frequently that the facilitator has a key role on that, that there is a tendency for the facilitator to, uh, to, to, to push or to do even sometimes EDP instead of having it done completely by the local people. So these are, let's say, practical uh, issues that can come up uh, at this stage of the process. Thank you, Isabel. Please, Clifford. Uh, good morning. Morning. Um, actually, I I have a question with regards to the question of uh, evaluation. Uh, I would want uh, if anybody could help uh, because uh, I want to know when you are doing the evaluation, who exactly is responsible for the evaluation? Is it that you are looking at the group's evaluation of the entire EDP or the facilitator's perspective of the uh, evaluation? Or you need someone outside to conduct such an evaluation? I don't know what, what, what is the best or which, who is actually responsible for this? Thank you. Thank you, Clifford. That's a very good question. Um, and um, I would say that responsible for this is the, the facilitator with the entrepreneurs. The, them together should review the or the or the enterprise group in that in that in that case, if it's a group, should review together um, and evaluate the, the enterprise development plan. So that really it's a, it's about making sure that um, 
the entrepreneurs have also understood what is what is what all of this all of this is about but also the facilitator to check is there are there gaps in this edp do we need to go back and perhaps verify some things and as their name says they should facilitate that process but um there could also be um an element where you ask for example entrepreneurs or entrepreneur groups to to review each other's edps and they can comment on it and they can come together in a workshop and say, look, this is, we didn't understand what you meant here, or we can see a gap here. Um, so it could be, it should, should be a self-assessment. It could also be a peer assessment. Um, but ultimately, yes, it's, it stays local, the responsibility, if you, if you know what I mean. Yeah, thank you. Oscar, did you want to add another comment? Yeah, on, on, on to what uh, Isabel said that you 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 will need a very experienced uh, person to to guide the process of evaluating the EDPs. Uh, I, I normally I've, I've I've used the within Kenya Forest Service we have a business development officer who really assists us to do a lot. We just ask him to assist us to do a, an independent evaluation of the EDPs after we have done them, and normally he does very good quality check. So you need somebody very experienced. You just to understand how it flows and all that, uh, but you don't need an external person to do it. You you you, you just need some of the the the, the 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 people who are really well trained in the methodology, so that they're able to guide you. Even if it comes from outside, that person has to be to be trained in, in the MAD methodology. Yes. Otherwise, you may, another person may not also not understand what you are doing. Yes, and yeah. I can also see that there is a very um, clear role here also for the the FFPO business incubation unit staff to to review the MA, the the EDPs that that the facilitators will will provide them with through from their entrepreneurs and from their enterprise groups and I think this is a really important service that they could also um, offer to their members um, to to help them evaluate the the quality and consistency of their EDPs. Okay, um, I just would like to quickly share some criteria for evaluating. Let's see how I can share my screen again for evaluating the EDP. Sorry, I didn't finish my sentence there. Um, so I've listed here very briefly the main criteria that um, the evaluation needs to needs to cover. So, is it complete? Are all the uh, the questions answered? Are all the boxes filled in? Is it accurate? Are there any miscalculations? Are the same units used consistently? And um, from the few EDPs that I've seen, this is quite a common problem. Um, is the data entered in the appropriate boxes? So is it accurate? And then there is a, an evaluation around the strengths and weaknesses. Is the, the investment proportionate to the production level? Are, are the labor costs proportional, um, proportionate to the, to the production level? Um, are all production costs included? Is, is the project environmentally friendly? Um, so these are the sort of reflections around strengths and weaknesses. And then um, the information should ideally also be cross-checked with perhaps similar entrepreneurs, enterprises or similar projects. So is the cost of the equipment that is proposed in EDP um, similar to the cost, the average cost that you find in, in that area, in that district? Um, similarly for the, for the raw material costs, are there matching the average costs in, in the area where the enterprise is located? Um, is the productivity proposed for the enterprise in line with local productivity? Um, so this, these are the sort of cross checks that one could do. And then of course, you, the, the, the facilitator with the entrepreneur will come to a conclusion. Is this EDP ready for further consideration to start the enterprise and then also perhaps to, to use this to apply for external funding? or other elements that need to be reviewed still. Um, and as I said, uh, this could be self-assessment uh, and a peer assessment. Um, 
and the, the facilitator should agree on a timeline for these revisions that might need to be done um, if you find that there are some, some gaps still. So there, there should be a clear plan for the entrepreneurs by when they should have um, done these revisions. So it's not just let, let go in, in eternity. Okay, um, I've already started talking about some common mistakes, um, and I've listed I've listed them here on two slides. <laughs> so there are quite a few things that can go wrong. Um, uh, so what what could be a problem is, for example, um, that the marketing strategy is quite vague. Um, so this will give you an indication as a facilitator that maybe the market survey was was incomplete. There is some missing information. Um, or it might look like the information is copied from, from previous or other um, tried enterprise models. So of course, um, this means that the entrepreneur did not do all the calculations and all the strategizing him or herself. Um, or there might be some, some detail lacking on the resource management, which might signify that the, the entrepreneur might not have a good understanding on how he or she will be able to, to maintain a sustainable resource base for their production. Um, or perhaps some of the risks were not fully um, uh, analyzed and estimated so, uh, and solutions found for them. So this is of course um, a risk management problem. Or some of the production costs are incomplete, which means that the profits that you'll actually make will be lower than projected because you haven't calculated all of the production costs. Um, similarly, with labor time being unrealistic um, um, or the units that you've used, that they've used in the EDP are not coherent. Uh, so sometimes they would use liters for honey, sometimes they would use jars. So there needs to be, there needs to be coherence there. These are some very common errors. Um, continuing on that list, um, uh, it could be that the production process is not really detailed enough, which gives you an indication that the entrepreneur hasn't perhaps grasped all of the different steps that need to be put in place to, to actually produce what they want to produce. Um, uh, or the, the calculations that are made in, in the enterprise development plan do not reflect the information that was collected in the second phase. Um, what also often happens is that um, the capacity for equipment is calculated wrongly. Um, so um, the machines that are perhaps uh, that the entrepreneurs um, envisage in buying um, uh, are often are often overestimated in 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 uh, matching to the actual capacity of what they want to produce at which they want to produce. Uh, sometimes there's a mix up in, um, with fixed and variable costs. So that's not often clear, or sometimes that's not clear. Um, uh, the selling price that was determined by the, by the entrepreneurs is widely different to, to, the, to the averages for that particular product in that region. So they will find it difficult to, to actually sell anything. Um, or, or the costs that they have included um, do not match the averages in the, in, the, in the area. So this is again something that I just mentioned before. Um, do I have another slide on mistakes? No. Um, do you have any questions on the evaluation of EDP still? We have about two minutes before I'd like to move into phase four, so we have enough time to cover that. Okay, so let me move then. Oh, sorry, I did not rename this. Of course, this is phase four and not phase three. Um, so here are the, the, the different steps of phase four. So by now the entrepreneurs or groups of entrepreneurs have, to have identified their EDPs um, and the EDPs have been evaluated and accepted. And the business incubation unit and the entrepreneurs at this point should have an understanding of the, the training and assistance needs. Um, 
sorry, there was one step I forgot to talk, talk about. Um, I'm just gonna, um, yeah, I'm just gonna talk this because we didn't talk about the uh, extracting the training and support needs from the EDPs. Um, so this should be done also in collaboration with the, the business incubation unit. Um, and this, there is a key role here for the facilitator to sort of summarize the results of the EDP preparation towards this unit um, and need to also really check then all of the five enterprise areas. So um, is there perhaps other perhaps training needs on how the entrepreneurs will manage their resource base? Or do they have particular training needs on how they will um, they will pay back to the community and the, the different ways that they could um, um, address the social aspect of their enterprise? Are there part particular technical training needs that, um, that need to be addressed? Um, or are there perhaps um, gaps in the marketing strategy, some, some training that could be that could be implemented there, but also perhaps the opportunity of joining up with other groups to, to, to combine forces for their marketing. So this is a sort of more bird's eye view of, of, of the, the little gaps still in the in the enterprise development plan um, that could be addressed by either training or, or finding strategic partnerships. And then importantly also, um, uh, the EDPs will give information about the startup costs and the financial plans and any resulting capital needs, or perhaps any, um, uh, any gaps that the, the, the entrepreneurs have in keeping financial records and bookkeeping. Um, so these are all the things that by looking at the EDP and, and doing the um, evaluation exercise, the facilitator will be able to draw out and um, and help to link up uh, with uh, with the service providers for those particular needs. So uh, then coming to phase four. So as I've said, by now the, the entrepreneurs have been identified, their EDPs have been accepted. Um, there is an understanding of the training and assistance needs and the objective of phase four is to support the entrepreneurs during the startup phase of the enterprise. And often, I think this is the phase that is most, um, <laughs> most disregarded or shortened, uh, and, but it is one of the most crucial phases indeed, because um, uh, entrepreneurs need a lot of support in the beginning. Um, so I just wanted to do a quick check now, and I'm going to stop sharing because I want to see your hands up. And I just would like to ask you to raise your hands if you, in your own context, have been able to provide. And I don't. I'm not going to ask you to speak. I just want to raise. Want you to raise your hands so I can count how many of you have been able to provide follow-up support to the entrepreneurs that were um, supported up until now through through your organizations could you could I please see your hands up for those who have provide have been able to provide follow up support So I can see four hands up. Is there anyone else in this group present listening <laughs> who, um, who, who, would, who could raise their hand in signaling that yes, they have been able to support enterprises through their startup phase once the EDPs were prepared? Again, I'm not going to ask you to speak. Just please raise your hand so I can count the numbers and keep them raised. Or if you if you don't can't find the raise the hand button, put it in the chat so we have a record. Okay, that's I can see five hands up. That's um, that's uh, Nila. Yes, six hands. Please, is, uh, Jacques, did you want to say something? Or are you raising your hand? 
Seven, Ivan, yes. Okay, so um, as you can see, that's quite tragic. <laughs> that's a very low number of people who can actually uh, had the chance to follow up the startup activities of their of the entrepreneurs, but it is critical. Um, yes. Yes, I can see. Uh, I can see Sophie asking questions. <laughs> um, okay, well, that was just interesting to see. Um, perhaps also for you. Um, thank you very much. You can put down your hands. Um, and for those of you who have raised their hands, who have had this experience of of following up with entrepreneurs, um, what was your experience in this? How was this organized? Were there any issues that you faced in this? Um, issues for the entrepreneurs or issues for the facilitators? Mm. Interested to hear. Akbe um, Akbobli, would you like to, 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 to recount how you managed to follow up? What, what did you do? What were the activities in following up with the entrepreneurs? Mr. Agberg Bobli from Togo. Thank you. As I've said, we supported uh, the officer to start uh, a new activity. They were producing coffee and cocoa. And after that, uh, they wanted uh, to produce soap with the task of uh, uh, cocoa and coffee. Yeah, we did help them to elaborate their business plan and uh, this is a new activity they didn't have any experience so we noted that they would need the training so we put up uh, the uh, appropriate staff uh, for the training. And after that, uh, we had uh, to do the marketing. And uh, we were able to help them to have access uh, to market uh, and to help them to promote their product uh, uh, through access to uh, some network. We did a market study before uh, the beginning of this, the activity so that uh, they understand uh, what, uh, to understand uh, the, the market uh, so that they can uh, market their product. So this is what we did when it comes to the training promotion and uh, we, we gave them a uh, technical skill so that uh, they can start their business. So this is all I can say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so if I understood correctly, the, the follow-up was focused around the, the marketing aspects um, and, and the, sorry, Isabella, I can't hear you. Um, the, the marketing as aspects and um, and uh, the 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 commercialization, so the 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 uh, bringing the products to the market and and uh, receiving feedback. Did I understand this correctly? And some technical training. Indeed, uh, so that uh, they can understand uh, techniques for production. Okay, thank you very much. And um, and uh, and what were the what were some of the issues that you have encountered? There was that an easy process, or did you feel that um, 
um, maybe the facilitator had some difficulties or the well, yes indeed uh, this is an activity we didn't we didn't know so we had to identify the trainer so that so we will be able to uh, support the farmers uh, when it comes to production technique uh, fortunately we we were able to overcome this uh, challenge and we managed to bring our trainers. This helped us uh, to spread the uh, technology needed. Thank you. So you had some difficulties identifying initially training service providers for the technical requirements of the entrepreneurs. Okay. Um, I could see Ivan's hand up before. Did you want to recount us your experience, Ivan, and following up with, with the entrepreneurs during their startup period? Uh, during their pilot period, sorry. Hata? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Because I don't know why the microphone of my sometimes have problem. We can hear you. Okay. I think uh, the EDP yesterday and today we talk are uh, very, very important and very difficult. When we work with our FMPO as the uh, plan uh, straight with you, at the beginning, when we uh, intend to training for, for them, we invite the leader or, 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 the, or team leader of group to come and facilitate not only a province and even district and commune to come to learn. And most FPO they are very, very uh, afraid of calculation by, by uh, Microsoft or by, uh, uh, yes. This is why the facilitator at this, at this step very important how we can help them to, to fulfill almost the, the, the table. This is very important. Let them understand and let them to follow us. This is the first. And the second thing, uh, we also ask trainer Tuan or other trainer how we can simplify the table, but the farmer and MPPO can understand what they have to calculate like today we talk about Yes, and let them to understand that if they want to start the business with their business uh, strategy, they have to understand the uh, fixed cost or variable cost and uh, how they can get the income after three months or six months, for example, like that. Let them to understand and make the confidence for them first. And when they understand, they come back and after training, we also organize some training like the MAND, but in the community with, with their member, not only leader of FPO. For example, yeah, they, they have the 10 or 15, we organize also, and they can involve and they can understand about the process very simply, but they understand. And then we discuss with them how we can contribute the money or investment when we talk about the cash flow, yes, or fundraising. And even that, we enable at the different level, we understand about the scale of business of this FPO, how they need money in at the beginning. This is why we guide, we guide them to establish EDP, but not only EDP, we also guide them to write the proposal for small grant from FFF and from other fund, from VNAP fund or from other local fund. This is a why step, step. They have the confidence and they know, ah, if we start the business, we can find uh, some, some funding from uh, different resources. And we also provide technical uh, training for them, for example, for uh, plywood processing also. It means that they do not 
uh, very uh, they uh, don't uh, uh, they not only understand about their EDP, but they know about equipment, what the, they should invest and in the technic technology and how labor, they have to choose some participant for their processing. Almost that, when they have the confidence, they can start with our facilitator at the local. Even sometimes they suffer with problem on legal problem like the, uh, uh, license for processing. We also have to uh, organize a roundtable discussion for local authority understand about their EDP also. Because the EDP is the, for the FAPO first for like the internal. But sometimes the local authority if understand when their uh, expectation, they can provide more support for our FAPO. It is why I think EDP will not only evaluate for the business and for FAPO, but when we organize a roundtable discussion as a commune, the local authority also understand and also understand as constraint of them how they can support for for business for FAPO. And I think it's very important. And we, we would like to work with them not only for the tech training but after training follow up this edp very important for facilitator uh, thank you very much thank you Ivan. yes indeed very very important and i think if i can summarize very briefly what you said is the mm -hmm. sort of two two part role that that vnfu a producer organization plays in supporting entrepreneurs and one is building their own capacities um, in certain aspects but then also try starting to build bridges with with strategic partners. Um, so both are really important aspects in in this uh, in this phase and actually throughout the whole MAND process. Um, I can see Akbe's Akbubi's hand still up, but maybe this is an old hand. And I could see from um, uh, Oscar, you've you've put in an, uh, in the chat. Uh, you provided follow up support by mobilizing um, FFPO membership, collective production, um, improving quality standards of products or around how to improve quality standards, um, collective marketing, financial access. Um, I guess an important question for me is, um, um, at which point in the, in the startup and the trial period are the facilitators present? Um, with the entrepreneurs, how does this usually happen in your experience, and what 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 is best? Thank you very much, um, Kata. I think the, 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 the early stages of the enterprise development, yeah, or implementation of the EDP is very important, and uh, the facilitators have to be really very very close to the to the FFPOs. And, and, and that means that in the beginning, you have to, 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 to ensure that uh, the entrepreneurs are setting up this uh, activity very well. Uh, you, you have to start very well. And the, 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 the most important thing is that the facilitators have to develop a rapport, a very good rapport with, with, with the enterprise groups, with the FFPOs, uh, both their leadership and the membership, so that they're able to ground this Issues uh, as they continue implementing the EDP. Uh, of course, you know, Kenyan experience is that most of this uh, you'll find that people are doing individual production, and because of the small scale nature of our farming, uh, then the production levels can be very low. And that's why we, we, at the very beginning, we say, how can we mobilize these members so that they, re they revolve around a particular product? And after revolving around that particular, pro and this is an activity that is done uh, together with the leadership of the FFPOs and the facilitators, so that we are, we are able to get more members able to join, so that they are able to, to bring these products together. If, for example, it's honey coming from a catchment, then you, 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 you get that enterprise group that is mainly dealing with honey, and then they start bulking this and, uh, and improving the quality as, you, 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 as time goes by. The most difficult part I've found in the entire process 
is um, issues of quality and access to, to markets. Yeah, quality and access to markets. Uh, like honey that is produced locally, it cannot just be sold in the supermarkets in Kenya. You have to get what we call the Kenya Bureau of Standards stamp so that you're able to, uh, what we call a, a barcode so that you're able to access that market. And normally that, we used to forget that cost in the beginning. Uh, there's a cost attached to it. We used to forget that cost. So, and then the eventually they ask, oh, but we have a cost implication on this. So nowadays we remember that and say that we have also to train them uh, on this, bring, uh, bring the cabs people to come and talk to them on the quality standards and what a quality standard entails. Then they have to send these samples to the, to the Kenya Bureau of Standards for them to get what kind of quality they have for that product. And it is really assisting them to, to, make, to penetrate the, the, the urban markets uh, for them to be able to sell their products. So in, in those processes, you find that the facilitator is very key. Yeah. Uh, especially also when they're doing linkages with other stakeholders, especially on, on either capacity building support and all that, the facilitator will play a very key role, uh, plus the group leaders to be able to identify who is the, the really right person to come and train them on particular aspects. Those are the areas that I find the facilitator is very, very important. Yeah. Thank you, Oscar. Uh, um, I would like to give the floor directly to Clifford. Okay, um, thank you. Um, I want to also share uh, what I think uh, the follow-ups should be. Uh, one of the areas uh, in developing the, the EDP uh, is to consider the marketing component. Uh, at the time, sorry, at the time of, uh, Oh, who is that? Sorry. Somebody's fetching, somebody's fetching water. <laughs> so, 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 so um, they are pouring water into a container. That's why. Sorry. It's okay. Yes. We can't hear it. Go on. Okay. So one of the areas is the market facilitation component. That is the aspect that the facilitator needs to be uh, there. Uh, after developing the EDP, one of the key things you need to support the enterprise with is access to market. And with the access to market, what we normally would do is that you, you identify the potential market outlets and then do a backward linkages back to the, uh, the, the EDP uh, uh, group. Now, when you identify this market outlet, what it comes to, what you get to understand is that you know the quality parameters that they are looking for, you understand what requirements the market is looking for, and then you are able to do this kind of backward linkage with the ADP to support them with the necessary capacity building and quality training to be able to meet and access these market opportunities that existed. So in our context, what we would normally do is to look at this kind of approach. Assuming you are doing a product on organic uh, uh, baobab or organic share, you want to look for a company that is also interested in buying these organic products. Then you work it out doing this backward linkage back to the EDP so that you can support them to implement the EDP. Uh, some of the mistakes I have seen in the past is that mostly we develop the EDP and assume that the groups are going to be able to implement it by themselves. So we don't do the necessary follow-ups to ensure that those areas of capacity, capacity gaps, we are able to support them by strengthening them to be able to deal with those challenges. So those are some of the things I think uh, the facilitator is still very critical in the pilot stages, uh, especially in facilitating the market linkages and also providing quality assurance to the companies that are, are going to be working with them. And, and once we have this done, I'm sure we have very good results as well. Thank you. Thank you, Clifford. Um, yes, indeed. Uh, being able to match the quality standards required in your market is an essential job of the enterprise development plan or the enterprise itself. Um, so, and ideally, 
that research has already happened also in earlier phases. So the so the, the, the actual plan of the enterprise is developed around the demands of the market segments they have identified uh, as, as targets. Um, but then of course, once the, once the first production uh, round happens and the first samples are produced, it is really important to, to check with your buyers whether the quality matches their requirements. And then they need to be some adjustments made perhaps in the production process, which will have implications on your entire plan indeed, um, or might have implications on your entire plan. Um, but yes, those are the sort of adjustments that importantly need to happen in, in that trial period. Um, and that's based on feedback from your market. Um, thank you. Uh, I can see Tang's hand up. Yes, thank you, Kata. Yeah. Thank you very much for a very uh, interesting <laughs> discussion. Uh, uh, for Area of Vietnam, uh, we think that uh, support the thing, uh, entrepreneurs or Area POs to implement uh, their EDBs are very important work. Uh, for us, uh, MND not uh, simply a, a tool, but also it's uh, really a guideline for Area uh, implementation. So, because our uh, main uh, beneficiary is uh, FFPOs, so they are, they, they are doing with uh, the forest and farm for sustainable or not, it really de depends on their business plan. Uh, because uh, through working with the FFPOs, we uh, understand that uh, after training is just uh, that very, very uh, early started, but the important thing is uh, how to support them uh, in implementing. Uh, as you know that we finished uh, MND training in uh, 2019, but uh, as of now, we're still uh, ongoing to uh, follow up and supporting. So uh, normally we uh, try to create a chance to, to support the uh, entrepreneurs or FFPOs to uh, regular uh, have a meeting so that they review uh, their operation activities and also their business plans. So through uh, focus group discussion or roundtable discussion at no uh, uh, level, like uh, Ivan mentioned, uh, many uh, issues we realize that they, the FFPOs, they really deal with many difficulties in their uh, implementing their EDP. For example, the uh, capital for production and uh, also marketing skills and product certification. And uh, that's the, re the reason why the interference of MF uh, to support MFPOs through different uh, kinds of activity, activity are very important. And uh, we, uh, we uh, um, understand that um, no, if we only let the MFPOs uh, like uh, they are going alone. It's very, very difficult for them. That's why in the working, uh, we also try to mobilize different uh, stakeholders to uh, support them, like uh, contact, uh, connect them with the uh, enterprise. And also we regularly uh, organize like a trade fair to uh, bring them to different areas to introduce their product and sell their products. Thank you. Thank you, Tang. Yes, that's that's really impressive commitment. Um, actually, uh, the EDP EDPs were prepared four years ago, and you're still there, following up with the entrepreneurs and the enterprise groups. Um, and, and it just goes to show that indeed there are many, many, many problems in the beginning. And and if our entrepreneurs left to their own devices, um, they may fail, um, which would be um, um, a big risk for them, mostly. Um, so it's something to avoid, and 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 good if if there is support available. Indeed, very crucial. Um, before I present my slides, I was wondering whether there was anyone else who would like to perhaps <clears throat> recount their experience. Please, Jack. Yes. 
Euh, Il y avait une charge de Madagascar et les supporting villages to set up their business from A to Z. And uh, I have been training around maybe 50 people within a few years. So we went through the EDP, total EDP, but while training the villagers for the EDP, we invited the agricultural department, forestry, fisheries, business, bank, the, the guy who was in charge of the district, everyone we invited, and we tried to keep them all along. Because we have not enough staff to follow up later. We invited also the head of the department or the head of the director of the national parks because we were working in the buffer zone of the national park. And we made exact plan with the villagers of what has to be done each month by each of them. And we asked the department, each department, to say when they can work also with the villagers. We gave incentive to the departments so that we are sure they will be follow up, they will be following us. So there was a follow up, a technical follow up from A to Z by the department. That means it, even if it was in forest, agriculture, fisheries, each of them had their own role and they were a little bit given incentive for that. And also, what was important is that when we went for the marketing, there was someone from the project whether we could find that was starting from the first consignment, that means preparation, loading, going to the place for selling, unloading, discussing with the buyer, getting the money, taking back the money, distributing the money to the villagers, all this went down from A to Z. And then for a few years, after that, I don't know how we came. I don't know if it's there or not. But anyway. We had a very good follow-up from the institution because they were involved from A to Z. They were very happy to take some and to understand, okay, what is MEMB. We got also very good follow-up for the, uh, we can say, banks. There was some few money invested. And for example, the head of the director of the National Park was very happy, okay, to, and he follow up whatever he could because it was a way for him to protect the national park. So he was really taking care that all these guys were working and destroying the national park, usually at another job, okay, and they stopped destruction of the national park. So that's almost what I wanted to add, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Jacques. That's, uh, that's a good, uh, it's good to hear uh, an example of where you were actually able to follow up in so much detail and, but also, um to to mobilize these these really relevant partners and important partners who will remain in place once the project leaves and 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 those are the partners that the entrepreneurs need to need to be linked up with um perhaps i could share a few slides and then we can come back to some questions would that make sense now or is there anyone with an urgent question right now no okay let me share my screen again. Sorry, sorry, there is a bit of background noise. Um, okay, so um, we're still on this slide, which I erroneously called phase three, but of course it's phase four. So I just wanted to talk through the, the, the steps, the individual steps, because now we've sort of been talking about the whole of phase three, phase four, the whole of or the whole of the, the startup phase. But I just wanted to very quickly go through each step um, with a couple of very text heavy slides, sorry. Um, so in the first step, which is all about, well, let me just go back, um, but the entrepreneurs obtaining their financial resources as estimated in the EDP. And of course, I mean, all of this is fluid. It could be that step two happens first or step one and step two happen at the same time. Um, just to say that there are some, um, some topics, I suppose, around which the, the, the steps are organized. And the first one is around the financial, the financial needs. Um, 
So as I've said, the facilitator here places an important role in, in understanding and analyzing the financial needs and providing also a link with potential service providers. And they could also be NGOs who might have some project funds to support uh, the startup of um, small enterprises and help in the negotiation on the support. Um, so the service provider, approaching service providers for financial services should also be based on the findings of, um, of the surveys conducted in phase two, where the financial service provision landscape was mapped out by the entrepreneurs with support from the facilitators. And they should really also, um, the facilitators should encourage entrepreneurs to, to think about the importance of starting small, so not necessarily relying on external credit because it might be difficult to get or it might take a long time to, to come through. Um, so there might also be some training necessary here around um, how to manage different funding options um, that they, they might identify for themselves. And we've talked about this point here around the EDPs meeting the criteria of the, of the, the financial service provider. And there might still be some training necessary on bookkeeping, um, on maintaining a, a bank account. Um, and what is also crucial, and, uh, and Jack touched on this, is, is trying to be present at every important step during this this trial phase. So uh, in this case, um, in terms of financial aspects, try to be present during the first sale because often um, entrepreneurs are tempted to, to, to use all the money that they, they may receive from these sales and uh, perhaps not putting money aside for operational costs or for the repayment of, of, of debt. So try to sort of accompany them also in this step. <clears throat> so. Um, in the second step, the facilitator will then, and this is all about the other capacity needs or training support needs. So the facilitator should work with the, the entrepreneurs so their groups, the business incubation unit of their, the FFPO and training service providers. And, and Tang and Ivan have, have mentioned very good examples of where they, they link up with, with different, they, they try to provide that bridge between the entrepreneurs and different training providers. And Jacques also mentioned that and bringing on these people on board early on in the process and explaining to them what MAND is, how it works and, um, and understanding, making them understand the benefits of it uh, will be very beneficial in establishing these strategic partnerships. Um, so there is a review here, of course, of the list of the training needs and establishing links with, with training providers, as I've said. And, and this could be in any of the five areas of enterprise development. Um, and you have mentioned different aspects here around marketing or technical aspects, um, but it could be, or resource manager, and it could be in all of the five areas. Um, and, and of course, um, a review should be done of any training needs assessments if any new technology, when any new technology is adopted by the enterprise. So this is an iterative process. I'm sorry, the, there is a lot of text on these slides, but <laughs> we're nearly through. Um, so in step three, uh, and this is crucial, and we've talked a bit more about this um, just then, this is when the entrepreneurs start their activities at a pilot level. Um, so we said it's important to, to, st to start at a small scale and the, the um, uh, facilitators assist the entrepreneurs in testing the strategies that they have developed previously in their enterprise plan. So um, uh, uh, there should be a work plan set up, which very clearly stipulates um, the work plan in terms of um, supporting the entrepreneurs in this in this first trial period or pilot period. And this is also what, what Jacques was telling us about in how they did it in Madagascar. This should really list all of the activities, the, uh, the person who will be responsible, the skills and the knowledge required, which partners to involve in this, um, the date and the duration of this, this follow-up activity and the, the, the facilitator assistance needs. So where is it? What is it that the facilitator will provide in terms of support? for each of those activities. 
And then um, it would be really good if it was possible for the facilitator to visit the enterprise regularly. So ideally once a month during the pilot period. And the pilot period can last up to a year even. Um, and and they and the inter the facilitator should have some level of confidence around the what the enterprise is about. So they don't need to be an expert in the, that particular production process, but they should have some basic understanding of um, is this actually the right equipment that is being used? Are other uh, enterprises who produce similar things using the same type of equipment, or are there some adjustments that need to be made? So with some confidence about what what the what the enterprise is, is actually doing, and at each visit, all of the five areas, and we keep coming back to that, should be screened um, by the entrepreneurs with help of the facilitator. Um, and um, yes, of course, it helps the facilitator and also with the entrepreneur to uh, the entrepreneur with the facilitator. Sorry, the other way around to visit similar functioning enterprises to 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 sort of understand how they how they work um, and then what is also uh, a, a good thing to do is for the facilitator when they visit the enterprises to to check the raw material storage so try to understand not really coming across as as a policeman but trying to understand how is the enterprise faring um, and um, we've also talked about um, how it is important to support the entrepreneurs when they st start their interaction with the buyers. Um, so the, the negotiator might, uh, sorry, the, the facilitator might might be might be more confident in negotiating contracts. So they should try to help also the entrepreneurs in this in this particular phase in this activity. Um, ensure that the first batch, the first production batch is actually sold in the market so that the, um, uh, the quality can be checked and you could receive feedback on the sample from the buyer. Um, there might be some corrections needed in the process based on this, this first batch um, or the, the feedback that you get on it. Um, and there might and there might still be some additional studies necessary or any training based on the feedback. Um, what else did we not mention yet? Yes, it's also a really good idea to record what happens in this pilot period um, and to organize a sort of workshop at the end of it to review the results and prepare a work plan for the for first year of, of production at full capacity. Um, so step four is then really about um, building skills for entrepreneurs to be able to monitor their own systems. So once the facilitator is not present anymore. So um, the facilitator should help them establish a simple monitoring system for their enterprise. And um, they should assess their performance at least once a year, but in the beginning, it's better to do it twice. Um, and uh, it's also, of course, important to still keep monitoring all of the five areas of enterprise development and, and do some kind of SWOT analysis. So look at the strengths and weaknesses, any new and upcoming opportunities or any threats that, that come up in any of these, these areas. And then, of course, set realistic targets for the next cycle. Okay, um, this was my last slide. So um, do you have any questions or any comments on just this last, this, the, the fourth phase that we just talked about in the last 45 minutes or so? Please, Tuan. Yes, uh, hi, Kata and everyone. I, um, I have uh, one question. Um, uh, when uh, when the FFPO conducts um, implementing um, uh, your uh, their EDP in the real uh, context, uh, they have uh, to monitoring uh, and um, uh, draw lesson learn for another EDP. Uh, can can you share with us? Can you share with me 
uh, how we can help them monetary effectively mm, uh, because the, I, uh, I wonder about the criteria uh, for moni monitoring, um, how, how to make it effectively in the real context. Yes, that's my question. That's a good question. Could I perhaps pass that question on to Isabel or Jacques? Um, what I would say is that for, for the enterprise themselves, uh, the, the key, uh, let's see, the, the key uh, figures about their plan becomes becomes the criteria also to 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 assess uh, do they do they uh, what the evolution compared to their plan of of their target in terms of of sales in terms of etc cetera, etc cetera. so this is internal and and the problem is that they should keep record of of that uh, that's that's the main point actually that usually people don't use to keep record on their uh, performances or whatever in the enterprise. And, and if we want to compare and to help them to, to, to monitor them, their enterprises. So the main point is to make, uh, let's say, choose some of, of the important criteria uh, 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 that would be easy for them to, 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 to check. Um, there is not one model. I think every uh, every project, every uh, institution should develop its own model to to see what is important for them. Is it only the market data? Is it only the enterprise uh, performance data, or it, 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 is it also uh, according to their broader objective, like uh, resource management related to the, or is it also on social aspect? impact on women, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't think we can develop one model, but each, each institution should, should see what are the most important criteria for them and develop their own small system and a, a very easy format for the, for the uh, entrepreneurs or group of entrepreneurs to, uh, to really put, put their data in. Thank you, Isabel. Tuan, did you want to say react? Yeah, thank you, uh, Miss Isabel. Uh, and can can you share some example about the mechanism that they can they can make to uh, to for monitoring uh, for for uh, for make sure transparency or fairness uh, in in the real context? Yeah. Yeah. Um, can, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you were asking whether um, there are any templates or any, yeah. any methods that we could share on how to monitor the transparency yeah. within an organization? Yeah. It looks because like the, the, yes. yeah, because they have to monitor. Um, but in the real world, um, can you can you give some 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 example or uh, some uh, some problem that 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 that, we, that FFPO can handle to to make sure monitoring mechanism for tr transparency and fairness because they work uh, together uh, they they um, they work together so they have to make uh, make make uh, own of information transparency or fairness in on of the process. Can I? Please go ahead, Jack. Can I try to answer? Okay, uh, if you want to monitor one enterprise, first, you go to look at the books, the accounting book. Then you know exactly what is happening. You know if there is profit or not. You know if there is a loan in the bank and it's paid. You know if the staff is paid. You know all these type of things. 
Then you know from where also is coming the raw material. And you have an idea of if the raw material has an impact on the environment concerning the quantities and all this. That is the first thing you have to do. The second thing you have to do, you have to enter in the processing room and look if all okay, the technical issues are well done. If the enterprise is not dirty, if there is nothing missing, if the workers are working well, if there is protection for the workers, if there is social security, if there is all this, you have to follow it. These are the two main things you have to do at the beginning. Then you can check if the enterprise is running well or not. The third thing you can go to, to add, okay, is that you have to look what is the impact of the, environment, of the company on the environment and to be sure that the raw material that is used is coming from okay what the people are saying they are buying okay if it is really coming from the sustainable resources then once you have done this you have to go to see the buyer and discuss you know if the entrepreneurs bought really okay good final product or not or if there is a problem on this if there is a problem you have to report to the entrepreneur that's the main thing I think you have to do to monitor an enterprise. I hope mm -hmm. I am clear. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Jacques and Isabel. Yeah, that's why they have to record all of the information follow your EDP. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. much. Isabel. Yeah. Jacques, thank you, Todd, for the question. Is there anyone else who, who has any questions at this point, either on phase four, but now we have 10 minutes left on the whole of MAND. This is your chance. <laughs> Please, Mr. Mr. Uru Gnani. with regard to all the training starting from the first day to date i my at a personal level i uh, think with regard to the uh, market development we need to look at the um, raw materials after looking at the raw materials you need now to move on to a uh, data collection at the grassroots level. And after this, we need to do some uh, monitoring. That is how we are going to get the necessary information to help us uh, grow the enterprise to a higher level. Because if you look at uh, uh, agricultural businesses there are lots of problems and therefore you need to take a lot of time and see uh, what we have carry out analysis on the uh, collected data so that you can have uh, sufficient information and then when you do that you are going to uh, looks like we've lost him now you broke up, but um, yes, um, yes, thank you. Um, it, it, indeed, um, it's uh, it, the resource space is, is just one of the five areas no, that is really important to to sort of keep in mind and and scan every single time that the the entrepreneur assesses itself um, and its business and the, the facilitator helps them helps them do that. But it is a uh, indeed um without the resource no enterprise um and great to yes to establish the training needs along the way as 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 you accompany the the entrepreneurs thank you very much someone else who would like to have a final comment or a question I have perhaps a question that I could ask you, and that is really this idea of the, the producer organization or the FFPO, the Apex FFPO 
um, business incubation unit and and the role that this can play in providing services around MAND to its members and how you could see how this could be sustained, this service, how could this be financed? And this is really a question to you. I think this is a sort of fairly new idea that we are, we are all playing with. And, and some of you have already established certain services for your members around, around business incubation and business development. Um, but I, I wanted to hear maybe a bit more of your ideas and experiences on this and also welcome Sophie, Johnny, if you're still with us. Yes, please, Yvonne. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you, Kata. I think uh, through our uh, refreshing training of uh, MAND, we also learn uh, a lot for, uh, from the past training and um, implementation and maybe for the coming time. I think uh, uh, we when we work with uh, FFPO, we uh, focus on training and uh, capacity building for FFPO. This is a very, uh, uh, very uh, um, traditional way for every project. But now through the FFF Vietnam, and I think that's the, in another, uh, in, uh, another hand, we can, uh, raise the environment, how FFPO can implement the EDP or the business like the incubation. And first, the APEC organization of farmer is very important because um, why uh, when we organize uh, training of MAND in Vietnam, we uh, select an FFPO leader and team uh, member, but also uh, some facilitator, not only as uh, province facilitator, but even district and facilitator. And through the training of every step, they understand about MAND at home process. And after that, they not only support for FFPO, but they also thinking more and more opportunity how they can connect with other stakeholders for the business for FFPO is very important for business incubation because almost the for forest farmer they they live very far from the city after one training or two training or three training they still not have the confidence enough this is a why if the APEC organization do not follow up with them. I think they, 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 even they have the very potential product, potential resource, natural resource uh, around them, but they do not know how they can start and with whom, step by step. And this means that the route have been discussion from the beginning from the commune and the district or province level, bring them not only the voice of farmer can talk with the local authority and relevant uh, stakeholder, but relevant stakeholder and local authority also understand well about the difficulty of FFPO and they can provide more support, more, uh, in, uh, more of environment of policy for our FFPO. This is why I think that if we, 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 we um, let the FFPO to go alone. They are so difficulty and maybe sometime after some business, they, uh, their business broken down, they, they will do not take action more. But if we go with them and so problem in the each step, I think step by step, we will uh, build up the confidence and the capacity for FFPO is very important. And through this, the APEC also have the staff have more idea, more capacity for services. And after a process that, they also strengthen the capacity of staff of APEC also. And I think it's very, uh, they also learn from FFPO, not only provide services, but they also learn and they can share experiences for other FFPO. 
not only in that area of FFF, but in other province or other districts. I think it's very important, the APEC. Yeah. Thank you, Ivan. I really like your last point about this, the two-way the two way uh, of, 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 of exchange. Um, we don't have a lot of time left, but I, I, I would like to just um, also give the floor to Mr. Uro Gani. Nani. Sorry. Thank you very much for the floor. I would like to thank Kata and over and above that, I would like to uh, reiterate our thanks uh on behalf of our uh our fellow participants even though uh, we did not uh, discuss we have always been uh, requesting these refresher causes uh so we really are thankful that you managed to get some time for you to conduct this um refresher cause for us uh on this uh helps the uh participants really to have good notions to help the uh enterprises or businesses so i would like to request you to send us the modules that you used uh in this uh, training if we could uh, if they could be sent to us so that we can reuse them we would be very thankful thank you very much thank you very much yes i will put the i will put the we will send you a link to all of the presentations um of this training and i could see sophie's hand up one last word before we say goodbye yeah uh, first of all Kata, thank you so much and and, and the team uh, jack and isabel it was really a great uh, refresher training with good discussions on your question, how this link, for me, the MND is indeed a tool for producer organizations, for producers and producer organizations to support their business. But for me, it has also another function, and that's the beauty and the versatility of this market analysis and development, because it's also a planning framework for managers, for project managers, for facilitators. It is a screening um, tool that helps you to see where, where do we need to support uh, these enterprises. So it gives you with the five areas and with this, this different steps and, and phases, it really helps you to systematize and to have a uh, how to, uh, so you as an APEX organization, let's say as well, the APEX uh, producer organizations who want to support their members, you have a member organization coming with an enterprise, how, how can you help them? With this MND uh, tool, with this uh, overview, this, uh, what I say, this planning framework, you have, once you get the MND uh, in your head, you, you will very easily find uh, and see the, where are the problems, where can you, uh, what are the gaps and, uh, in the business that comes to you. And you can also then identify uh, the support that is needed. And, and this MND is like, for me, a basic tool for uh, the business incubation role that Apex organizations can, can take up because it helps you really to understand and, and to have to plan as and, and where are the gaps and where are the it's it's really this analytical screening that you would need uh, to do to identify the services that your members would need and as a as an apex organization you cannot have all the knowledge and and, uh, and all the services in your organization but then you as an apex organization then can find out, like I hear from Yvonne, and, and I know VNRU has done this in Vietnam very well, to go and, and look for support and training capacity and all that with other institutions and, and government organizations or with the private sector and so on. So I, but some basic capacity MND is giving you for this uh, business incubation, I would say so, yes. So it has multiple purposes. 
So thank you again, and I hope this was helpful as comment. Yes, very useful indeed. Because I think you do have that bird's eye view that you know is is we, we don't all have that, and that's really good to see the potential um, use of MAND. Um, so um, this is it. Thank you so much, everyone, for participating, being present, um, sharing your stories, asking questions, being focused. It's been really a privilege to, to spend this time with you, a, a privilege for me to spend this time with you. And um, I'm sad it's over, even though it was a lot of work, um, but I really hope to, to see you, to see you also in person um, at some point further down the track. <laughs>